Welcome to the Pre-Med Preacher. Today we're doing an exam review for Physics 250, so we'll get right into it. Hope you guys enjoy. Take a moment to read question six. This is a classic dimensional analysis problem. If you travel six miles in three hours, and you multiply that by one hour, which has 3,600 seconds, and you multiply that by 1,609 meters per one mile, you can cancel units in order to get 0 0.89 meters per second which is the average speed of the parade in units of meters per second take a moment to read question seven in this problem i suggest you write out the two cases and you can use the ratio of the masses to figure out the ratio of the maximum force of static friction however things get confusing fast so one thing i would suggest is to remember that the kinetic coefficient of friction is typically less than the static coefficient of friction. Given this, we can assume that the friction force between the bookshelf and the floor the second time you pushed was less than it was for the first time since the weight of the bookshelf was reduced, and therefore the kinetic coefficient of friction is now being used when calculating friction between the bookshelf and the floor. Take a moment to read question 8. For this problem, you want to do tail to tip vector addition. So if you add the vector before and the vector after, you get the change in velocity vector. As you can see, I've drawn it in, and the answer corresponds with the change in velocity vector A, which is our answer. Take a moment to read question nine. This was the one question I got wrong on this exam. E is not the answer. If you take a look at the graph, you can see that between each of the points, you rise one y and go over one, two, three, four, five in the x direction. Between the next two points, you rise one y and go over one, two, three, four in the x direction. Rise over run is one over three, then one over two, then one over one, then at this point, you're just rising one y and no x. And then you begin going in the negative x direction because we're moving at a constant ratio in the y direction, one up between each of the points. There is no net force along the positive or negative y direction. However, because we're experiencing a decrease and then a negative increase in the x direction, that means that the object must have experienced a net force just along the negative x direction. So the correct answer here would be B. Pause the video and read question 10. This is a classic kinematics problem where they give you V initial equals 30 meters per second. V initial in the x direction using trig would therefore be 30 cosine the angle that they give you, which is 20, and that equals 28.19 meters per second. We can also calculate the initial in the y direction using trigonometry, and we know that since the ball is thrown and lands at the same height, the change in height is zero. With this information, we can use one of the kinematic equations in order to solve for time. Gravity on Earth is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we're going to solve for T. We get 2.0938 seconds. So this time is how long the ball was in flight. But if we want to calculate how far the ball went, also known as the distance traveled delta x, we have to use another kinematics equation. Now. Because this is in the x direction, we use v initial in the x direction 
as our V initial. And we use our acceleration in the X direction, which we know is zero after the ball has been thrown. After we plug in time, we can calculate that delta X equals approximately 59 meters, which is answer choice E. Familiar. Familiar.